Welcome back to Press Any Button. I'm Nikki. And I'm Eric. And today we're going to be discussing a game called New Pokemon Snap. <laughs> That's the name of it. New Pokemon Snap is an on-rails first-person photography game developed by Bandai Namco Studios. You have a self-driving car that allows you to focus on photography. And over the course of the game, you'll be given tools that allow you to interact with over 200 Pokemon in the game. After an excursion, you can select one picture of each Pokemon to present to Professor Mirror, who will rate your pictures based on size, position, pose, etc. of the Pokemon. Also, probably some spoilers, because we'll talk about the story a little bit. Yeah, I never played, I never finished the story, so uh, you can maybe say if there's anything worth spoiling. It didn't seem like there's a lot of story. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of spoilers, but I mean, it's nothing like too dramatic or anything. Okay, so we're definitely going to spoil it. In... A little. Okay, well, we may spoil <laughs> it a little bit. It, it won't ruin how much fun the game is or anything, though. You know. That's good. So, so it's not really centered around the story too much? Uh, yeah, sort of. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> You'll find out. So are you excited to get to learn about new Pokemon Snap? Oh yeah, baby. I'm excited. And all the history of this brand new game. I'm really excited. That I was able to find. Definitely. Oh yeah. Bring it to me. Okay, so new Pokemon Snap is obviously a sequel to the first Pokemon Snap, which came out for Nintendo 64 in 1999. Did you play the original Pokemon Snap? No, I never even heard of it until the new one came out. And you told me about it. <laughs> it sounds pretty fun from what people have uh, told me, though. Yeah, I mean, I played it maybe briefly at a friend's house for like five minutes, and it seemed pretty cool. So it's really difficult to talk about the history of the new Pokemon Snap game without talking about the first one. Also, I couldn't find it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, I mean, it's a sequel. Yeah, so I'll be kind of going back and forth between the new one and the old one a little bit. Even the uh, development team for the new Pokemon Snap consulted heavily with the original team, according to the game's director, Haruki Sasaki. So the original Pokemon Snap started off as a game called Jack and the Beanstalk, based off the fairy tale. What? <laughs> I, I so assume you, you like go around up. and take pictures of like fairy tale creatures and stuff? Um, there, there's very little known about this game, uh, but one of the art designers said that the game was to feature seeds when planted, these seeds would grow in real time. Oh gosh, real time? So you'd have to wait like a month or whatever for your plant to grow? Uh, does that is that not a game feature that would appear? appear no way, you? no way. I think the listeners know by now my attention span is definitely not that long. Well, well, the game was originally being designed for the 64DD, which is a disk drive add-on for the Nintendo 64. That was kind of a commercial flop. <laughs> So instead of using a cartridge, you could use a disc, like a CD, to play a game. I have no idea or... how how that works. Oh, okay. Um, it yeah, was, I don't it know wasn't. How that would work either. Like I said, it wasn't commercially successful. It came out like way later than it was supposed to, and then like two years later, the GameCube came out. So it was almost obsolete by the time it came out. Gotcha. While they were developing the Jack and the Beanstalk game, the Pokemon franchise blew up. Like the red and I think blue games came out for the Game Boy. Okay. And the team decided to transition the game into a spinoff, into a Pokemon spinoff game. Huh. Probably because it was doing so well and they liked money. <laughs> That's like very much a different, um, going in a different direction. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Going from a classic fairy tale story to the latest and greatest newest game and just doing a spinoff. Yeah. Hmm. And, you know, initially some of the developers didn't like the idea of switching because they had to scrap a bunch of work they had already put into the game. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes you sense. You know, all the work they had into growing seeds in real time, you know, that was, there was probably a ton of work that went into that. So Turo Iwata, one of the producers of the game, explained in a 2010 interview, originally Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo 64 system wasn't a Pokemon game, but rather a normal game in which you took photos 
but the motivation for playing the game wasn't clear. We wondered what players would enjoy taking pictures of, and later on we made a somewhat forced switch to taking pictures of Pokemon. A somewhat forced switch. That doesn't sound uh, like he was happy with the decision. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a lot of the developers probably wouldn't have been happy. You know, you spend all your time making this game, and it's like, oh, it's going to be a Pokemon game. Throw all that out. Throw all that out. Taking yeah. pictures of you know, I mean, giants hey, as long as you're getting paid, though, ultimately, you, you, that's kind of your job. You just do what they want you to do. Yeah, these guys just needed to shut up and do what they were told, like Nikki yeah. said. Don't complain. Because, <laughs> hey, ultimately, they got to be a part of this super cool game that is probably way more successful than the plant growing game would ever be. Yeah. Just, uh, well, yeah. my two cents out there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Once they switched to photographing Pokemon, uh, the direction of the game became much more clear, according to Menasubu Yamato. So basically, adding the, the Pokemon element kind of gave the game clear direction. Like, okay, this is definitely what you're going to be taking photos of. And, the, and then they can kind of come up with criteria to, uh, to, to make it count. Yeah, like a purpose for the game. Something yeah. that's going to drive your story, too. The new Pokemon Snap, as Nikki said, was developed by Bandai Namco. According to the director, uh, Suzaki, it was the depiction of Pokemon in their game Pokken Tournament, which led to the opportunity to work on the game. Uh, have you heard of Pokken Tournament? No. Uh, have you heard of Tekken? Yes. Okay, so uh, Pokken is a mashup of the words Pokemon and Tekken. Oh, okay. So it's like Pokemon fighting each other. Yeah, so it was basically like a Tekken-style tournament fighter that featured Pokemon as the fighters. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, honestly, I had never heard of the game. It sounds like kind of a fun game. Yeah, cute little mashup. Yeah. New Pokemon Snap released on April 30th this year, 22 years after the release of the original. Wow, that's so many years later. Yeah. Why did it? Do you know why it took so long in between? Ooh, that's we're hinting at a fun fact. Mm, okay, okay. You can tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This game generally received positive reviews, but it's still early, so I know people are probably holding out for our review of the game. Oh yeah, I'm sure everyone's holding out for our review. It just makes it all that much more important. <laughs> Usually our reviews I don't feel really matter because it's been the game has been reviewed a million times already. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is the newest game that we've done so far. This is new new new. Yeah. So are you ready for the fun facts? Oh, I'm always ready for fun facts, especially fun Pokemon facts. Well, I have four of them. Woo! And you're going to answer my question with one of them too, so that's cool. Yeah, it'll be like a double two stones with one bird fact. No, it's one bird, <laughs> it's one stone, wait, what? <laughs> the two stones I understand with one bird. what you're trying to say. I'm picking up what you're laying down. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, fun fact number one, Todd, who is a side character in the new game, has the full name Todd Snap and was actually the main character of the first Pokemon Snap game. Uh, did you pick up on that when you were playing? No, I definitely didn't because, well, I never played the first Pokemon Snap, so I, yeah, I definitely did not they, know that. They weren't like, oh, Todd, you're the famous photographer from the first game. No, they definitely weren't, and I don't even remember really if they exaggerated his last name or anything like they mostly just call him todd but yeah. i mean it could have flashed up on the screen or something i was too busy you know taking pictures of all oh. the pokemon <laughs> he is 22 years older in this game yeah he's grown he, into a man yeah he's like um our age kind of in the game <laughs> probably yeah. his late 20s early 30s or something okay I don't know. That's what it looks like. Uh, I mean, but he's also animated. So, I mean, what's age? <laughs> <laughs> he has question mark old. Yeah. Okay. So fun fact number two, the original Pokemon Snap had an item called Pester Balls <laughs> that could be used to knock Pokemon unconscious. Uh, they replaced Pester Balls with Fluff Fruit in the new game, uh, which can only really use, be used to mildly annoy the Pokemon. Uh, do you think this game could have used more violence? No. <laughs> Why would you want to just knock the Pokemon out? And plus, a, like a part of this game is developing your relationship with the Pokemon, 
you know, making them feel safe around you, becoming their friend. I don't think knocking them unconscious would be a good way to uh, get them to warm up to you very, <laughs> very well. Well, I don't think it knocked them all unconscious. I think it just, like, knocked the smaller ones unconscious. Oh, that just sounds mean. So you no, were... No, there's plenty. There's um, the perfect amount of violence in this game, which is <laughs> very little. Okay, so no no pester balls. So no they were they balls. wisely chose to like kind of replace those with the fluff fruit. Yeah. A lot nicer. So fun fact number three. Fun fact number three. In an interview, the game's director Suzaki said that there had been a couple of attempts at sequels to Pokemon Snap before the new Pokemon Snap game. Unfortunately, the interviewer didn't follow up and there's no other information on what those games might have looked like or even what consoles they were being develop, uh, developed for. So, in an alternative reality, this could be the fourth Pokemon Snap game. Wow, yeah. I mean, games fall through all the time for various reasons. They could have started, a company could have started making it and they went out of business. Or maybe they started making it and then the Pokemon people didn't like what they were doing. So, yeah. they took away their rights to use the Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It could be a lot of different reasons, right? Yeah, maybe they had too much violence or something. Yeah, who knows? Um, I'm glad that they finally did come out with one, though. Yeah. 20, 22 years later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so fun fact number four. A famous video game creator is one of the producers of the original Pokemon Snap. Uh, can you guess who it is? I'll give you a hint. He created Mario and Zelda. Oh, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Miyamoto. Yeah, Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he was one of the producers on the original Pokemon Snap. Cool. And did you, you said he was a producer on this one, too, or no? No, I don't oh, okay. think so. That's pretty neat. That is, doesn't really surprise me too much. He kind of has his hand on all the classic legendary games, I yeah. feel like. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And that concludes that part. Yeah, those are some cool, fun facts. Yeah. That's a fun little history. Like, yeah, it was. I'll, I'll say it was kind of tough to find stuff on the new one since it's so new. Yeah. So I did kind of like handicapped to going back to the first game a little bit yeah one thing i did read that i thought was kind of cool is that it seems like you know in some of the original pokemon games and stuff it is a lot more violent you have like pokemon fighting each other you capture the pokemon and all this stuff yeah that's like the main yeah that's so, still it's still like what you do in yeah pokemon so games. in this one i feel like they get away from that and it's a lot more like good vibes, let's be friends. No, no <laughs> capturing of the Pokemon except in pictures. Really, no fighting of the Pokemons. None of that. Yeah, it's but it's kind of cool. But you know, when a Pokemon was defeated, it would just faint, so it was yeah. fine. Yeah, <laughs> just, totally. It just fainted just faint. from all the pain. Mm. <laughs> but anyways, I want to say I really like this game. I have a ton of pros for it, and. Originally, when you were when you said, "Okay, I'm getting this new Pokemon Snap game, Nikki," like uh, I got it preset, so it's gonna automatically download on Friday, like whenever it's available. And you were telling me what it's about, and it's like, "Yeah, you just take pictures of Pokemon." I'm like, "This sounds really lame. Like this sounds boring." And then when you got in, we started playing it. I, like totally got addicted to it, and. <laughs> Yeah, my opinion on it totally changed from just, like, hearing the basic premise to, like, actually playing it. It was really, really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. So, obviously, I, I love the game, and I'm going to say a bunch of good things about it. Um, well, do you want to say one of those good things now? Yeah, sure, I'll start. Um, I kind of already did say it. It's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun, relaxing, yet challenging game. Like, for the most part, you know, like we said earlier, it's an on-rail photography game. So, it's kind of like you're on, like, a safari ride or something at yeah. Disney World. And you just ride through these different locations and try to be aware of all your surroundings and look around and try to take pictures of as many Pokemon doing as many different things as possible. Yeah, that's absolutely <laughs> right. So, most of the time, it is pretty relaxing. But occasionally you do have different like tasks or like puzzles almost that you need to complete to get certain poses or certain scores. And so that's yeah. where it can be a little bit uh, challenging, but in a good way. 
Yeah, and it does give you tools like as you go along that allow you to kind of interact more with the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Like you get Fluff Fruit where you can hit, hit Pokemon in the face, but it doesn't hurt them because Fluff Fruit doesn't weigh anything. It can only mildly annoy them. Yeah, and they can eat it if they want to usually. And then you have the Illumina orbs. Yeah. That you can also throw at the Pokemon, and which will invoke different behaviors. And also make them sparkly. Yeah. It also, yeah, it makes them kind of like glow. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that's kind of nice about this game is you can take photos for the game itself, you know, to try to get the highest score photos, but you can also take photos that you just kind of like. The photos the game likes tend not to be the most artistic, I guess, photos. Yeah. They're just like the Pokemon as big as possible in the frame. Like yeah, I'll talk you. about that later. Okay. <laughs> but you can go through and just save whatever photos you like. And you can, you, it gives you some basic tools. You can edit them. Mm -hmm. You can add filters. You can add stickers. You can add uh, captions. And you can also kind of post them onto their little online community. And you can just kind of like the other photos that you see on there too. Yeah. Um, that's like one of the pros I have too, is that you can edit the photos and you can share them with the Pokemon snap community. And yeah, like Eric said, they give you, it's almost like their version of Photoshop in a way you can yeah. edit it. You can change the saturation. Uh, you can add stickers, you can add special effects, frames, um, all that kind of stuff. Or you can just leave it plain if you want, whatever you want. And then you can post it to your page. Each player, I guess, has their own page. And you can pick up to, I think, six, no, eight pictures that you want to showcase at any time. And then the professor picks a couple of his favorite that automatically go on there. But yeah, you can go in, you can look at other people's pictures. You can see what goofy stuff they did. And you can even like their pictures, which on here is, it's called sweet <laughs> so it's not really a like but it's like you know it's like a little button it says sweet exclamation point you just not you just like push it and it like yeah. awards points or whatever to their, their picture yeah. but it's really fun to see like all the funny things that people do with the pictures yeah but i will say you are limited and the number you can have posted at once yeah i was a little bit peeved that you deleted my awesome Bidoof picture. I'm sorry. It was just up there. It, it wasn't getting any more likes and I had some others I wanted to keep up and eventually you're gonna have to rotate all the pictures out. No, the Bidoof <laughs> stayed forever. It was fun. It's kind of like silly how fun it is just to put like little sunglasses and fedoras on Pokemon <laughs> and like make them look silly and you're just like giggling the whole time. Yeah. They also have a really cool resnap feature on there and i don't know if you've played around with this yet or not but when you go in to save any pictures that you want to at the end of the scoring round you can go into a picture you can crop it differently mm -hmm. you can make it sharper like if it was out of focus you can make it sharper you can do a lot more of the like i guess technical editing stuff that you might really do on a picture and save it as a different file so like if there's one that you think looks really cool, but you just need to do some editing, like make it, you know, more focused or like mm. crop it in more or something like that, you can do that and save that and then take that picture and go in and edit it with the fun stuff. Yeah. But, um, okay. Yeah. I, kinda... I just figured that out the other day because I took this really cool picture of one, but it was a little too far away. So, like, when I zoomed in on it, it looked really like a lot cooler and yeah. so i was able to save like the more zoomed in version so oh, nice. i don't know it was neat and yeah, yeah they just really thought about like giving you a lot of options yeah i didn't know that feature existed that sounds cool yeah oh. you have to check it out <laughs> <laughs> and going along with just the pictures and all that they did a really good job of making this game really beautiful the um, scenery and the different locations that they do are really pretty. All the Pokemon oh, yeah. look really cool. You really can actually get some beautiful pictures in this game. Like some that I would probably want to get printed out, you know? <laughs> yeah, the environments are really, really pretty. So Yeah, like the... Because most of the locations, they do a day and a nighttime version of it, which I think is really neat because the daytime is always pretty. 
But then getting to see the nighttime version is usually really cool too. Cause yeah. just, they, they put a lot of like glowy things. In yeah. And and, well, that. you have the glowy balls too, which mm-hmm. kind of can light stuff up. So it's, it's actually really cool to get some, some nighttime photos with those glowy balls. Yeah. And I don't know if they had nighttime levels in the first game. They probably did because it just makes sense. More some Pokemon are more nighttime yeah, po- I don't, animals, just like animals in real life. I don't think they did know, have some... nighttime levels. In oh, okay, the original. but it makes sense, you know, because some of the Pokemon are more nighttime Pokemon. They do yeah. their, stu- their stuff at night, and some are more daytime Pokemon, just like real animals. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool to see how they act differently in the day and the night. Uh, but yeah, they just did a really good job of making everything look re- really beautiful. Yeah, that's true. One of my positives were, uh, the levels are short, which might not sound like a positive, but there's usually a ton going on, on these levels, lots of places to look, lots of kind of secrets to discover. So the fact that you're going to be coming back to them to discover some of these secrets, uh, makes the fact that they're relatively short kind of good. Yeah. So what, what would you say a level takes to go through? Probably um, like seven minutes, like five minutes, yeah, yeah. five minutes, seven minutes. Yeah, like probably the ride through is about five minutes and then the scoring is like another minute or something. Yeah, that sounds Um, about right. Yeah, because some of the levels you have to replay several times to really see everything that's going on because there'll be multiple things happening in multiple areas. And so you can't necessarily catch everything all at the same time. Yeah, you're not going to be able to. You're not going to be able to look at everything in a single ride through. So, oh, yeah. Also, I like the story in the game. It's um, not too complicated, nice, simple, creative story, and it does a good job of um, progressing the game along. Cool. Yeah, I wasn't even sure there was much of a story, but that's good to know that it's there. Yeah, you're doing research for like a specific reason, and so a part of it is finding all these special Pokemon around, which kind of unlock the different locations. And then once you've found all of these special Pokemon, not to give too much away, but you find like the OG Pokemon basically at the end. And you kind of learn what you were searching for the whole time. So it gives a good like conclusion to okay. all the research that you're doing, I guess. You're not so- just doing research for no reason. You're like trying to learn a specific thing. And so... Cool. So it's all for a, a reason. You're yeah. Not just out there taking random pictures of Pokemon. Yeah, for sure. And so I think that does a good job because like once you start unlocking the different locations, it starts to get really fun because like with each new location, it's usually new different Pokemon and a new environment. So they've got like a jungle, they've got like a snow one, a cave one. Yeah, they pretty much have um, all the different Yeah, like an underwater, beach, all kinds of different locations. And it's pretty neat. Cool. So for me, the grading system, for the most part, I'll say that kind of with a caveat, uh, it felt fair. In the sense that you kind of knew what was going to be a high score photo versus a low score photo. You know, if you just kind of have a Pokemon in the background randomly, it's not it's not going to score super high. Yeah. It's like you want the Pokemon to be like really large, kind of centered and, and facing the camera. And there are a couple weird nuances where the professor's grade system will seem kind of out of whack, but usually it's pretty good. Like one of the out of whack things I think was that like fog doesn't seem to matter. So you literally have like almost the entire Pokemon obscured, but you can still get a really high score for it because he doesn't seem to see the fog. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. So even though you can't see the, the Pokemon, I guess maybe professor mirror can see through all the fog. <laughs> so he's like, Oh, that's a great photo. It's like, it's this is like power. literally just the color gray. All right. If you say so. <laughs> Those were all my positives. Uh, did you have any more? Oh, yeah. I have a few more. Okay. I want to say it's cool that this is a photography game. I've never played a photography game. And as a photographer, that's kind of cool. I never really thought you could turn photography into a game. But, you know, they definitely did it. You know, they're more creative than me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I don't really can't really think of any other photography games. Yeah. Can I can... you? I think there's a horror game which involves taking photographs. Of like of, ghosts and stuff? Of like ghosts, yeah. Ooh, that sounds cool. 
I forget. I think it's called like Fatal Frame or something like that. Okay. I think it's a series of games if you're interested. That sounds kind of neat. And a horror based look that up. photography but games. Anyways, there's not like that many of them out there. So this is pretty cool um, as a photographer to get to play a photography game. It's yeah. kind of neat. I also like that there's just a lot of game to play. I will say they do a good job of having many locations. Each location has different levels that you can go through. And as you level up for each location, it basically means the Pokemon are like warming up to you, you know, because like at first in level one, the, all the Pokemon are like, what the crap is this pod thing running through my area, you know, <laughs> but once you're up to like level three or the max level, you know, they've seen you a whole bunch of times. So they're kind of like more friendly towards you and not as like skittish. Oh, is that, I guess that's what's happening. Yeah, that's what's happening. So not only do you have like all these levels and locations you can play through, you obviously for each Pokemon, well, you want to capture a picture of each Pokemon for one. You know, there's 214 in the game. Yeah. I mean, have you got them all yet? No, I only have 209, I think. <laughs> so I'm working on it. But you also get requests from your fellow researchers, um, which is kind of like side tasks i guess you could try to do yeah so for example they might be like oh i saw a pikachu shooting lightning but i didn't get a picture like can you try to get a picture of that and then when you go through that location you can keep an eye out for that specific thing that they didn't get or whatever they're requesting and try to do that yeah they'll so, kind of have usually a little bit of a hint of like where it might be or yeah whatever too after you've gone through the story you still have things you can work on so you can if you haven't gotten all the pokemon you can try to get all the pokemon or for each pokemon you can get one two three or four star pictures so you can go through and try to get you know one of all the stars or platinum of all the star scores for all the star poses yeah you can try to accomplish all the requests that are given there's just a lot of extra stuff you can do i feel like after you've gone through the story you cool. know you can still keep playing and find like new stuff to kind of like do yeah you know yeah i got you cool so moving on to the cons do you have um some cons eric sure yeah so levels can get a little bit repetitive um especially when you kind of are stuck I feel like kind of early on where you have like maybe four or five levels and it's a little bit difficult to kind of try to figure out how to progress or how to get a new item or how to uh, unlock other levels. Yeah. I feel like this game could have benefited from maybe a bit more ram randomness. You know, I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm just uh, too much of a fan of roguelikes, <laughs> but I love randomness in video games. But as you go through a level multiple times at the same level, uh, the Pokemon will kind of behave in the same ways yeah they'll kind of do like signature things yeah like you can kind of start to predict like oh i need to look over here to catch or capture this or whatever yeah and as a result you can end up with uh very similar pictures of repeated playthroughs mm -hmm. so you can like it's like oh i got i think i got a really good picture of that pokemon and then it's like you look at the previous photo and it's like the same pose or something yeah, like almost that. the exact same picture <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I understand it's kind of hard because you also at the same time you want those secret elements you want you know if you have the same repeated stage then you can learn things about what's going on yeah and try to figure out like how to how to get different behaviors it's like okay like i know this uh, you know bidoof is coming out this way like uh maybe if i try you know luring him over here he'll do something different yeah and, and that's usually how you get some of these uh, poses is just trying to interact different ways with the Pokemon that are already kind of on pre predetermined routes or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And I think that's probably why they do that is so that when you are replaying and you're trying to achieve like a specific task yeah. that you can sort of plan out what you're going to do to accomplish that. You know, there's a little bit of predictability is kind of helpful. Yeah, no, I, I got yeah. it. I, I got why they want to But I will out. say one of my cons is like, honestly, <laughs> without all the super helpful, like, guides that people have put online, like IGN and some of the other ones. Yeah. Like, some getting some of these poses and getting some of these Pokemon to come out or whatever, 
I mean, I don't really know how you would figure it out on your own <laughs> without, I mean, just playing through like a hundred times, trying like every single little thing. For example, in one of the levels, you need to lure an Arbok over to another Pokemon and try to get it to like fight with it. So you have to like throw your fruit in the perfectly spaced out like trail <laughs> so that it doesn't veer off to get it to go over to the p other Pokemon so that you can take a picture of them like having a confrontation. And I had to play through the level probably three or four times to get this. And I saw that online. Like I wouldn't have, I don't know how I would have figured that out not reading that. And there's several examples of that in this game where you have to do very specific things. You have to lure this Pokemon over to do this specific thing and then throw a glow orb and then play your music like all in this order to get this <laughs> one Pokemon to fly over so you can take a picture of it in like one second, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So that's my only or that's one of my few cons is like I'm not sure if this was back in 1999 or whatever before like really the internet was a huge giant thing. How did you figure all this stuff out? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I prefer it when games kind of give you more of the ability to figure that stuff out on your own. But yeah. Maybe maybe the hints do a little bit. I don't know. I will say going into my next thing, the requests that I was talking about earlier, you know, it's kind yeah. of like one of the side things you can do. Although those are helpful, like if you re if you're having trouble getting a four star pose or something for a particular Pokemon reading through those and trying to accomplish those is probably what's going to get you the four star pose. However, for those requests to actually be marked as completed, if you are not like to the millisecond getting the pose and exact timing that their request is wanting, it will not count it. Huh. So even if it's asking you for like a Pokemon shooting lightning from its hands and you get that picture, if it's not, it might have some other rule that they didn't say um, in the request that they wanted you to do or something. Like, it doesn't always guarantee that it's going to be marked as completed. Huh. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's kind of annoying. Yeah, so it makes it a little hard. Like, you might have to try a few times doing the same request to actually get it to count. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. so that's a little frustrating. So one of mine was that the song, you, you can play to trigger certain Pokemon behaviors, gets played over and over because you have to test it on all the different Pokemon. Yeah. One of the things that you can get kind of like the Illumina Orb or whatever to get Pokemon to do something different is kind of like a little, it's almost like an ice cream man. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good sound. And so you can press, you know, your right bumper button and it'll play this little, almost like, yeah, exactly like an ice cream truck little jingle. Uh, and, it's, and it's, yeah, it's very repetitive. It's very repetitive, very obnoxious. Yeah. Uh, when you're playing, like, and I'm in the office sometimes, I can... I won't hear any of the other sounds from the game, but I will be able to hear oh, that no. song. <laughs> so Sorry. I, I can tell that you're hitting that button over and over again. I'm like, Sorry about oh, that. Man, if, it were, if it were like if I were a parent and there were like kids playing it or whatever, I would, I'd be like, oh my God. You can go into the settings and you can kind of like turn down certain sounds and stuff. Oh, okay. So like if you would have told me that, I would have maybe tried to do that. But speaking of repetitiveness, another one of my pet peeves of this game is Professor Mirror. Oh my gosh. When you're getting scored, he has like two things he says. Perfect timing. And what is the other one? Nice work. Nice work. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, even if you, even if a crappy picture pops up, he's like, nice work. And it's like, <laughs> No, it's not nice work, stupid. <laughs> like that's it's not perfect timing. Look at that stupid picture. Like, uh and it's just like they should have gave him a few more phrases or if like a picture score's really low, it would have been funny to have him say like try harder next time or something or, like that. Nice try. Yeah. <laughs> nice try. Nice work. Not great timing. Or okay timing. <laughs> I don't know. It just gets a little bit repetitive. And yeah. then another thing is when you're going through the scoring, 
I feel like they could have automated it a little bit more. You have to like press A like three times just to get through one scoring of one picture. And if you don't keep pressing the button, it'll just stop. So I kind of wish there was an option where you could just have it auto go through all your auto scores. Score. Yeah. yeah, that way if you wanted to just have it go through while you got up and got a snack or something, you could <laughs> or like whatever. Yeah. It's uh, just kind of annoying. You just have to sit there and like press a a a a a just to try to like speed yeah, through. Yeah, especially when you know? you know like you didn't really get any good pictures that yeah. round or something. Yeah, for and you're real. Just like uh, like I have to go through every single one of these shitty pictures that I took. Yeah, for exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's another thing that bothered you about the game? So I said earlier that I was going to talk about this. So I guess now's the time. But as a photographer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say this is not like an artistic photography game. You have to think you're a researcher, not a, you know, an editorial photographer, <laughs> you know? It's kind of like sucky that when you get a really nice photo, you know, your Pokemon's on like the rule of thirds and it's all cropped. You can see the background and it's pretty. You might even have some other Pokemon in the background. Yeah. That picture might only be worth a couple thousand points. Yeah. But then if you get a picture of a Pokemon square in the middle, as big as it can be, maybe looking at you, like that picture would be worth four or five thousand points, you know, like, yeah. so like if you are a photographer and you're playing this game, just try to remember that in the game, you're a researcher, yeah, you're just... not an artist <laughs> throw, throw out all the photography rules you learned. Yeah. In photography throw out class. all those photography rules. But yeah, that was one of my complaints, but it actually makes sense with yeah. the story of the game, you know, like, and I understand so that's just like too, too nitpicky. It's like, how do you grade photographs that are really artistic? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Like that's going to be a lot harder to figure out which ones are like really artistic versus the ones that are like, okay, here's the Pokemon as big as possible and centered that's as possible. That's true. Yeah. Especially when it's a computer doing yeah. it. It's just like... Like, that's just a much easier algorithm yeah. to write. Just to... And that's probably why they did add the, like, social aspect of it. So you can post your more artistic pictures on there and have yeah. other people see them and appreciate them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you can go back from a, a run you thought you had a really good photo that might not score well and just save it. Yeah. Know? But other than those things, like, I don't really have anything else bad to say about the game, which I feel like those things aren't even that bad. <laughs> yeah. One of my negatives comes from the story. Okay. So Professor Mirror appears to rely heavily on child labor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, have you noticed that almost all the members of his team are children or yeah. like pretty young, could be teenagers? That's true. I just, I looked at it more of like, oh, I'm at summer camp or something, <laughs> you know, I'm at science camp. I'm you like, know? is he paying these kids or like, <laughs> like seriously, what the fuck? Why does he have so many they kids working for They get paid in experience. They get paid <laughs> in getting to see all these cool people. Pokemon. <laughs> it's like so judgmental, but it's like, is he even giving these kids anything for these photographs? <laughs> you come to think of it, I never got paid, not even once. <laughs> of course, you would point that out. I don't know. It just seems kind of creepy, too. It's I mean, like, do you think it would be weirder, though, if you were playing as an adult character? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I think the game is more targeted towards like the age group of the main character, which looks like <laughs> what, 10, 12, something like that. It could be. Yeah. So that's probably why they made the main character that age. I mean, I get it. I feel like a lot of Pokemon games you play as kind of like a maybe early teens kid. Mm -hmm. And that's true. Like even in the first Game Boy games, like you're basically a kid and you're going out in the world, catching Pokemon, like just going away from home, like no school, <laughs> Peace, just going to, just going to ride my bike to all these different cities and catch Pokemon yeah. and stuff and battle people. <laughs> but I would say overall, I really like this game. I give it 10 out of 10 would Ooh, wow. recommend. I had a lot of fun playing it. So thanks for introducing me to the game. Cause yeah, I probably no wouldn't problem. have played it <laughs> yeah. without you picking it. Yeah. Cause it did sound lame at first. So uh if you think a game sounds lame, you should still give it a try. Who knows? You might like it. Yeah, it might be better than you think. Yeah. Playing it and hearing about it are two different things. Yep. So let's talk about game strategy. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you probably had much better strategy than me. Oh, I have a lot of, lot of strategies. There's a lot of different things that you can do. 
Are you ready for all the strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Did you, did you write them down? Or oh, no. This is on the top of my head. I got it. Because, I mean, I've been playing so much, I don't need to write this down. Okay. Uh, you know. Okay. Nikki strategy number oh, one. Oh, yeah. Strategy number one <laughs> is to make sure you look in all different directions at all times. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds kind of challenging. That's like... Okay. Yeah. But how you do this, what I mean by this is... Like, naturally, the game will try to get you to look at a specific thing. Like, it'll have an obvious Pikachu right there in front of you. One of my strategies that, that you have to try to do later is try to look away from that. If something big is happening in front of you and you've already gotten a picture of that, try looking behind you. Try looking to your sides because you might see some different Pokemon doing different things that you didn't see before because you were distracted by that other main thing. So you're saying don't get that 50th picture of the magic harp and instead try to find something else to take a picture of. Yes. Another thing is try everything on every Pokemon. So, you know, like we've said, you've got the fruit, you've got the orbs, you've got the um, music. The music. Try all of those things on every Pokemon because those will usually get you the different poses. Yeah. Even the, uh, even the scan feature can, I know, trigger some Pokemon. Yeah. And sometimes you just don't want to do anything. I've played levels where I've purposefully tried to just go through and not do anything to mess with the Pokemon. Yeah. Because sometimes they'll do something just on their own naturally that you'll want to get a picture of too. Yeah. That so makes it's sense. just like you have to try a bunch of different things. And, you know, that's kind of why you play through these locations a good bit. It's because you want to just be able to go through and like maybe just try the music on all the Pokemon or try Lumina Orbs on all the Pokemon or try different combos. I'm going to do music then Orbs on this one <laughs> because sometimes that will unlock um, a different route or a, something different to happen in the location. Too. Yeah, that's cool. One thing too is the, the scanning tool is actually super useful because it will kind of like show you where all the Pokemon oh, are. Oh, yeah. So if there's like a Pokemon behind a wall or in a cave or behind a tree or something, if you hit scan and you're close enough, it will like, it might show up some question marks. It might show up with the actual name of what mm -hmm. it is. If you um, maybe should have seen enough of it at that point. Oh yeah. So it's that tool. It can be really handy for figuring out what you might need to do to get some of these pictures that you might not see if you weren't scanning. Yeah. So I do remember like seeing someone play and they were just like scanning constantly, <laughs> just looking around like, okay, what am I missing on this? Yeah. Stage? Cause well in certain levels too, you have to do that to capture the Pokemon. Cause they're really fast or hard. They're just hard to get a picture of. Um, another thing is eventually in the game you unlock, I don't know if you'd call it a skill or you just unlock a setting where you can make your little pod go faster. So by pressing the right trigger button, you can speed up your pod through the course, yeah. which allows you to get different poses because since everything is kind of on like a timed um, yeah, so if, set Yeah, if you get to thing, an earlier quicker, you might get, yeah, if you get, get a picture a, that you wouldn't otherwise Exactly, if you get to an earlier quicker, you'll see something that you didn't see before. Or you'll have a longer amount of time to watch the Pokemon do like their whole routine. routine, or Yeah, or whatever. And so that's kind of a cool thing. Like I've played around with this. I've tried to just like speed up like for half of the uh, whole entire level just to uh, get like yeah. way ahead just to see if I can see anything cool some in the new or stuff. Yeah. But that's another thing that you can try to get different pictures and stuff too. Cool. Other yeah. than that, there's more specific strategies when you go into the Illumina levels. You know, some of the Illumina Pokemon, like um, the one in the cave, I think, it flies. And you have to hit it with fruit to unguard it, I guess. I don't know what the word would be, but it has like a guard up. And so you hit it with the fruit, and then it like, has nothing. And then you have to hit it with the orbs so it glows. Oh, uh, okay. And the pictures only count if you do all of it. Like, if you take a picture of it not glowing with the orbs at the end, like, it won't let you submit it. Huh. You have to do all of it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. different things like that. There's different different strategies once you go into, like, the different locations or you're talking about the specific Illumina uh, levels. But um, Yeah. 
And if yeah. you can't figure something out, there's always the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which, honestly, there's a lot of good resources out there. Like, I don't know if they gave some of these people the game early <laughs> because... Yeah, I think some reviewers did like, that access day, to it early. I mean, I wasn't looking stuff up like the day it came out, but like the next week when I was trying to get some of the things that I couldn't quite figure out, it was like they already had everything out there. It's like anything you want to know how to do, you can... You can YouTube it or read about how to do it. Yeah. It's kind of neat. It's kind of helpful because, like I said before, I don't know how I would figure it out on my own without it taking just a lot longer. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, um, Eric, do you have anything about the future I Pokemon do. Snap? I do. A recent data mine of new Pokemon Snap by Cyrus M., showed that the developers had left 40 unused reserved Pokemon IDs with empty data. This means that there's space for about 20 more Pokemon since each uh, Pokemon usually take two IDs. That's roughly the amount of Pokemon that appears in a full level. This could be that either a level was cut by developers or they left space for a level to be added later. Mm. So hopefully it's the latter and they will add a level later, maybe in an update or maybe Maybe as DLC, hopefully as an update. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I found too. The, the only thing I could find about the future was like the possibility of DLC or an expansion pass or some kind of free additional content was very likely to happen. But yeah, nothing's been like confirmed yet. I mean, it's still so new that yeah. I wouldn't even imagine that that would happen for like a little while. But I definitely think it wouldn't be too hard. The way they have the game set up, it wouldn't be too hard to just add a couple of new locations or like add new Pokemon to the locations that are already exist. Yeah, it's it seems like it would be really easy just to add more levels if they wanted to. like more, yeah. Because, I mean, it's just like a map and you have a little dot and then it's just an on-rails thing that's really short. Mm -hmm. So it seems like they would be able to add content pretty easy. Yeah. Um, there's one location, which is just the camp, which is just the lab, basically. Yeah. Um, you can go around your research location and take pictures. That would be a super easy one, I feel like, to add more Pokemon to. Because uh, okay. they don't have that many in that one. And I don't know. Really, any of them. I think it... I mean, I'm not a developer, but I feel like it wouldn't be too hard to go in and add some more Pokemon. Yeah. There's like, what, a thousand different Pokemon? Yeah, so they got plenty of options. They've got, yeah, like 800 more to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> there was some Pokemon I didn't see, though, that I, you know, some that I wanted to see that I didn't see in there. Was there any that you were missing? Psyduck. Psyduck. That's yeah. the one I thought of, too. Yeah, one of the best ones. Yeah, there's no Psyduck. And if you played the game, I would like to know what Pokemon you wanted to see that was not in the game. So, yeah, let us know that. All right. So, Nikki. <laughs> did so, Eric. You, <laughs> did you complete the main storyline? Oh, Pokemon yeah. So, oh, I aced it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of had a feeling. <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know what I could have given you. I guess I could have tried the Pokemon all or photograph all the Pokemon or whatever as yeah. a challenge. Maybe that would have been... It's fine, though. It's fine that you complete the challenge. Yeah. Honestly, I think I would have probably completed almost any challenge that you would have given me on this one. Yeah. Just because I like it so much. <laughs> and it was just delightful. Like, you know, as I'm playing it, and I did stream this a couple of times, it's just like you're always smiling, you're always giggling, or saying something like, oh my gosh, that's so cute, or look at that one, or it's swinging, it's dancing, or oh my god i didn't know it did that or i mean it's, it's just like a really delightful fun game <laughs> and it's delightful. it is it really is and it's like i definitely would recommend anyone to play it cool so that's good so you don't have to wrap this week i guess nope although i mean Ooh. this probably could have been a pretty easy one for me to wrap for <laughs> since yeah. there's like yeah, just do 200 the, Pokemon. And like, that's a lot of words to choose from to yeah. rhyme. You, you can know? literally just take the uh, names of all the Pokemon and make a rap out of them. Like yeah. They, they did that in that Pokemon. And that rap. one song that you made me listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it was going to be inspiration for uh, when you failed the challenge, but you clearly <laughs> didn't. Fail. I would never fail again. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> 
All, All right. right, so that brings us to next. my announcement of the next game. Yeah, are so, you ready? So, what game are we going to be playing next? Are you, do you want me to give you some hints? Sure. <laughs> it's a game where two things are fighting that would never ever fight in real life. Dinosaurs and humans. <laughs> <laughs> You're very close. Okay, one's organic, and one. Well, I guess they're both organic, but. One's a scary movie thing, and one is a... Um, Resident Evil. <laughs> okay, this is a computer uh, slash app game, and it's called Plants vs. Zombies. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> Two things that you would never see fighting in real life unless... I mean, I don't know. If zombies were real, maybe plants would get all crazy and like you could use them to fight. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, I played this game a while ago, back when I got an iPad for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for games to play on our trip that I could download, that I could play on the airplane, that didn't have to be online to play. And I downloaded that one, and I thought it was super fun and kind of addictive. Uh, yeah, I played it a while back too, and I enjoyed it. It's a uh, good real-time strategy game. Yeah, so I thought it would be fun. We haven't really done like a computer game yet or an app game. Yeah. So you can play it on your phone or you can play it on your computer. Definitely Are you computer. you ready for the challenge? Ooh, yeah. What's the challenge going to be? Like do something impossible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think this will be too bad, but I found this on Steam. It was one of the achievements that you can unlock. Okay. Okay. So whenever you unlock it, I'll know because Steam will tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just Photoshop a picture like I've done with the other ones. <laughs> <gasps> You're admitting that you Photoshopped your scores in the past? Uh, no. Eric. Maybe. Okay, no, I know I that you don't know how to use Photoshop, so I know that's a lie. <laughs> well, I, I, that's because I use GIMP, which is superior because it's free. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So your challenge is the... Achievement is called Cryptozombologist. Okay. Okay. And you have to discover the top secret zombie. Discover the top secret zombie. Yes. Like, how do I yeah. do that? And you are welcome to Google that or whatever okay. you want. I'm not going to tell you. But I did look up how to do it, and it seems doable. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike the Anna challenge that I gave you. Okay. Last time. So if I persist hard enough, I should be able to do this, you think? You got to believe. You just got to believe. You got to believe. All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, that wraps up our episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. Have a good one. See you next time. Bye. And as always, yeah, I was trying to get your attention there. Leave us a review, share with your friends, subscribe, and we want to hear from you on social media. So tell us what you think about the new Pokemon Snap game. Tell us um, what Pokemon you thought should have been included, and we will see you next time. Bye!